welcome to Eclipse, a sci-fi horror RPG show brought to you by this lovely crew. Well, I don't want to take up too much time talking about the details. We just want to get started and get, jump right into the story. Um, 150 years ago, there was an eclipse, now called the Golden Eclipse, because a shroud was lifted from the Earth and revealed a whole new set of space and time, as well as a new planet. First contact came from these beings called the Others. Not much is known about them, but we'll see where things go from here. We open up on Spaceport Crestmore. Two of our crewmates are standing by their ship in the docking station. They've landed for reasons that will become clear to you soon. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Eclipse. Peter. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe we made it here. <sighs> okay, and... What? You, you're not going to believe this. I already secured us a job so that we can be funded. I can actually hire a crew and it's somewhat, you know, in the same direction as where we'll be headed. So... I can hire people. We can look legit. Um, it's it's some sort of Astrian, you know, deep space exploration. They just want us to like chart stars and shit, you know. I'm sure that is something we can handle. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I don't know. I think I guess I guess um. Well, okay. <laughs> first things first. Uh, we need to rename the ship. We need to cover up that uh. That would be smart. Yes. Military designation. Uh, Do you have any thoughts? I don't... Um, I would... What should we... This is us naming our ship, Peter. I mean... Yes, it is. Is this something... You, you seem very excited. Well, of course I'm excited. Aren't you excited, Peter? I am now. Oh, good. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, uh, what about... um? Uh, if we call it destiny, then I can tell people, welcome to your destiny, as we hire them. I think that's a very good idea. All right, all right. So just get some, there's some spray paint still inside if you want to just grab a can. Just right. uh, cover it up, get uh, destiny on the side there. It'll do, it'll give it a, you know, like a rustic feel or something. Is there um, a particular uh, font you want? Um, font? A style. What, uh, a type of lettering. I mean, you know what I like. Yes, all right. I'll, I'll make something up. Okay, okay. Go and get spray paint. Good. Well, and when you get back, yes. um, I need your help in, like, making a legit, you know, sounding job posting. Something that'll oh. make people actually answer. Right, because we need to get a crew, so we need to entice them into the, having a job. Exactly. Yes. Got it. Yeah. I will well, help you as soon as I'm back. Okay. Um. Oh, oh, wait here. Go for it. Yes. Oh. <laughs> and I leave. <laughs> okay. Uh, while, while he's doing that, I guess I'll just, uh... Uh, I'll pull out uh, a device to um, just, uh, I guess, start start um, typing up job. I put I put job in like size twenty four font at the top. Got it. Underlined, and then um, on the second line, I guess um, I start putting. Uh, Come get lots of money and uh, um, adventure in space, comma, looking for engineers. 
scientists. And anyone down for a good time? Lots of exclamation points. And then, um, uh, uh, little PS must like dogs Got at it. the end. And I think that, uh, do they need to know any other details? I'll wait for Peter to get back, honestly. He's, he'll do the once over. You can come back. <laughs> <laughs> I have the spray paint. Oh, good. Uh, all right. What do you think of this? I'll turn the tablet and show him. Oh, um, you, you seem very excited. Um, yeah, well, I want people to, like, you know, be excited to work, you know, want to go. I, I get the, um, no, it's great. But I get, I get the feeling that anybody applying for a job is going to see this and think it might have been written by someone who's not uh, an, an adult. Oh. Uh, right. Okay. 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 I'll just, I'll delete everything. Um. Okay. Uh. Okay. So, like. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I won't use caps lock anymore. I'll put um. Astrian deep exploration mission. Better. Is the subject. Then, I'll put like uh uh payment colon uh, 5,000 credits per month okay estimated I don't know fucking one month we'll see if we get sure. <laughs> if it you takes more to. than one month you know once they're on the ship they're on the ship so like you know uh, one month accurate um, and uh, positions seeking all positions that could work all right. Okay, it's not as fun. No, it's not. But I think it will get actual responses. All right. We're, well, I think I'm gonna. The other one would seem like it was a scam. Okay, that's true. I'm still gonna put P.S. Must like dogs. That's fair. Considering and, uh, you're a dog. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out for this starport because ideally, you know, we probably shouldn't hang out here very long. We're not that far from Eden. That's true, and we should not list any other starport because we are not there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna send it. I'm putting it out for this starport. Um, is is a is a job. I listed it. All right. As soon as you send it, the ping goes out, and you take a good look along where you actually are standing. The starport is littered with food stands. Steam is coming up from the aisles. There's all kinds of food vendors. There's trinket shops, electronics. Um, fans circulate steam and aromas all over the place. You can smell all kinds of strange Astrian and earth-bound foods. There's a uh, neon flowing through the whole street. There's just a buzz and hum of lights. Pinks and magentas are kind of bleeding over the place. It's, it, it feels like it's nighttime, but really it's early morning for y'all. Um, as your signal goes out, um, the pings begin to come in. Because uh, you're accessing a global network of spacefarers, and anyone that's connected will get this little ping, and if they want to get to this job, they're going to find out where you need to be. Where do you want them to meet? Oh, sh Man, um, yeah, I put a quick addendum onto the job posting. Uh, meet at uh, uh, the ship dock. Uh, look for your, I put your, and then, you know, destiny, capitalized D, and then in parentheses, the ship name. Got it. Now you wait. Yeah. Is there anything else we should be doing before they get here? I'm, I've never done this before. I'm a little nervous. Well, you're the one who's supposed to have it together. I'm nervous too. I'm... You're right. I'm sorry. 
I will not be nervous anymore. I I don't know. I you know that the sooner the sooner we hire some people, and the sooner we get further from Eden, the better. This was just the first stop on the way. We do need a crew up. I mean, we can't just run it on our own. This is a long. No, we're going a long way away. Um, yes. I. Uh, I am sure everything will be all right. All right. As you console each other, the rest of you in your various locations get the ping. It's on your communicator. <laughs> There's a new job just popped up nearby the starport. Um, it's up to y'all to decide if you want to go there or just stick where you are. But um, one of the shops, Spring Space, the local plant shop filled with hydroponic herbs and edible vegetables. It also carries lots of uh, plants that are designed to have crew people just Kind of a sense of mental health and well-being. This plant you're supposed to take care of on long haul ships. And right there, Dr. Ruha gets the the notification on her device. Um in a nearby bar called the Sweet Sea. Sanchez, you hear it ping. You're in the middle of your your favorite tiki drink. It's another job, it seems viable. And lastly, at a junk shop called the Den. Tommy, your notification goes off. It's up to you to make the decision where you want to go. But, uh, you know, this could be the next job. Who knows? We'll see how crazy they are. You don't want to be like last time. <clears throat> right. I wonder what kind of amateur wrote this. I say to the shopkeeper. Some of the jobs they're putting out these days, it's like they'll let anybody post. I feel like you should have to have a license to post on the job boards. Let's see it. The shopkeeper takes a look. Show it to him. Seems like someone who's quite the amateur. Did you want the Venus flytrap? I do, but I'm going to have to insist that you bring down the price just a little bit. Hmm. Driving a hard bargain. Oh, but I think you like me. Just a little. I can tell it in your face. You told me I remind you of your granddaughter. You going to rip off your granddaughter? Well, when you put it that way, I think I can let you have it for this time. <laughs> I appreciate right. it, Uncle. You gain one Venus flytrap with hydroponic cell. It's basically a little device that the plant's sticking out of, and you need to insert it into the hydroponic uh, module. On, on, on a standard ship would have one, and it would just feed it nutrients and water. I love him. I'm going to name him something ironic, like uh, Lily. <laughs> so on. I'm going to take my little Lily, and I'm going to walk to the docks and have a chat with these people. Well, yeah, I'm in as well. This is gonna hold us on here, so. Uh, Buck's gonna peacefully finish his drink. Uh, it's hard to find a good brain drainer in these parts, and this one's hitting real nice. So I think I'm gonna finish this one. We'll start a second one, and then we're gonna make our way to that starport. <laughs> Got it. Kiko, as you wait, you feel like maybe it's not working. It's just the the pull you thought your your ad had just isn't really um, ringing true. But uh, you notice someone gently walking casually with a small it seems to be a small kind of plant in her hand. Um, and I'll let Doctor Ruha describe what Kiko sees. Um. You see a woman with uh, her hair pulled back into a very uh, tight ponytail. Um, it falls in her back almost like a smooth wave of silk. She is wearing uh, a thermal waffle knit shirt and uh, simple pants and knee-high boots. You 
depending on how much TV you watch, you might actually recognize her just a little bit, except, uh, you know, her hair looks a little bit different this time. Uh, I think I know her. Peter, isn't isn't she on that, um, that TV show that uh, I watch on Friday nights? Yeah, yeah, the um, Stars Apart? Yes, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, oh my god. Is she coming is that... here? Is she coming? Oh my god, all right. Well, no. here, here, look, here. look professional. We have to look well, like well, a real crew, Peter. Yes, no, I, I know. Why don't, why don't I go meet her? And you stay back looking very, um, like you're not interested. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll go do the talk. Oh, that, that's a good plan. Okay, so I, I cross my arm, you know, I look, I, I frown as much as I can, um, and st <laughs> stare down, um, and I suppose I should describe what I look like. I, I've got, she's got two little buns, uh, she's got a goggles, she's got a bomber jacket as well, um, with, uh, on the back, embroidered on the back says, welcome to the danger zone. And uh, she's got maybe like <laughs> five or six necklaces, um, you know, some lots of bracelets, rings, um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Otherwise, you know, totally plain looking, just mean eyeing. And Peter looks very, um, he's got kind of almost slick back sort of corporate looking hair it's a kind of uh, a reddish brown and he's wearing what looks like uh, you know cargo pants tucked into boots and a, and, a, and a white kind of rough knit shirt with some like holsters on and everything looks brand new like it's never been used before looks absolutely like he does not belong in these clothes and um he got and has uh, very blue eyes. And he walks down the ramp and he goes, "Hello, and you are Doctor Ruha. Pleased to I... meet your acquaintance. What kind of model are you?" Uh, I am, uh, am Android in service to the captain here, Captain Larson. Hmm. I am a. Um, A, an assistant, as it were. Um, are you interested in the position we posted? A little bit, yes. Mostly because you seem to have no idea what you are doing. And I find it rather uh, intriguing slash embarrassing. So I thought I, I'd help you and maybe uh, with some of your marketing and PR issues. I would argue to say we know exactly what we're doing, but to each their own. Um, well, if you're interested in the position, I would have you um, talk to Miss Larson. You seem like you would be at more at home in a uh, cravat. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I think you do. It's your job to know such things. Yes, I know what a cravat is. And yeah. I don't have any. Problem. I thought so. Well, it's quite all right. I would like to meet your uh, acquaintance, partner. I don't like the word owner. It makes me feel a little bit. Just not comfortable. You feel uncomfortable too. I, I didn't use the word. <laughs> I exactly. I don't know what the common parlance is. Uh... She is my employer. Um. Anyway, Miss Larson. Yes, Peter. Oh, um, what's this? Do we have a candidate? This is uh, Doctor Ruha. She is here about the position you posted. Hello. Very pleased to meet you, Dr. Ruha. Hmm. Very pleased to meet you as well. Uh, I believe Peter here said your name is uh, Kiko? Oh, yes. You can call me Captain Kiko. Or just Kiko. Captain. You know, Very interesting. Whatever. Yeah, this is my ship here. Oh, and you, you as she points to it, you see that I have, as we're waiting for mm -hmm. you, you painted in very precise lines on the side of the ship destiny can i still smell the paint i'm sure you can I yes about a minute before you got here <laughs> mm. i like you you seem to be as fresh as your paint why well okay thank you yes um you know 
this is a brand new mission. We're starting to crew up right from the ground, and you are our first person coming in. Um, I have to admit, I actually do know your work. I'm a little bit of a fan. Um, oh, and so I, I would be very happy to offer you um, a, a head of medicine position on board. Oh, I think I could occupy such a position, but uh, I was actually going to offer my services for something else. Oh, yeah. What, what, what did you it have It seems in mind? like this is your first mission, and the reality ah. is that uh, when you first are with the ship, off, yeah. You have to be very careful with who you uh, crew your ship with. Of course, yeah, These are people no. people you must trust implicitly. People mm -hmm. that uh, you can read very well. Mm -hmm. You don't want any undesirables to slit your no. throat in the night and make off with your aircraft. Absolutely, no, yeah. No. And for this reason, uh, I would like to assist you in uh, fielding your crew. Oh, well, yeah, well, perfect timing. I'm sure there will be more just around the corner any minute now. Um, yeah, but well. I want 8,000 credits a month and the nicest quarters. Okay. Now I'm sure as a fan you won't deny it. Uh, you know what? That's fine. Hey, I ate pails in credits for the month. Oh uh, yeah, it's a, it's gonna be about a month long gig, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, we're doing some some deep space star charting. Um, mm. if you're down for that, um, uh, I I will still need to interview interview the others. You know, like I know your work, so I already know that you're, you know, qualified. But I I mean I would appreciate the extra help of course in building the others and of you course. you are wonderful at reading people so it's uh, my job yeah no yeah that that seems good right peter if that is what you wish yes uh peter here is, is first mate by the way mm. on on board and you see that on my uh on the strap of my holster it has a patch that says smile big brother is watching We we go oh, way you. back. We've worked together for a long time. For rap for a year. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, long time, lots of gigs. So uh, don't think that this is like our first uh, rodeo or anything. <laughs> no. uh, any other candidates on the way? You do see uh, a, a rather small, balded guy walking towards you. He's got two holsters on his sides. He walks right up to you. You put out that call, or crew? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, My name's Jax. Puts his hand out. I, uh, I, I timidly take it. <laughs> Jax Brinkley. Jax Brinkley. All right. Jax Brinkley. Brinkley. Oh, Brinkley. Brinkley. Got it. Sorry. Oh, uh, all right. Uh huh. And and what is it that you um do? Uh, I shoot things. You point me at oh. it and I'll shoot it. Oh, all right. So like muscle. No, more like guns. These guns. And he points to the two guns on his hips. Right. This is yes, more I, of yeah. a of an exploratory mission. Right. They're set to stun. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, have you um served at all? Uh, you know, marine. Any sort of training there? Any I was sort of captured by the black bands. All right, so some more illegitimate one might. Between you and Bye. me, if you point me somewhere and say shoot it, I'll just do that for you. No questions. Easy peasy. I look at Doctor Ruha and Peter. I mean, they could be useful. You kind of just... What are you talking about? This no. is a big liability. I would oh. very much suggest no. Uh, okay. What do you think is going to happen when someone offers him more money than what you've paid him? They'll just point him right back at you. And I would not shoot. Because we have a contract. Do you have any referrals mm. or anyone that can vouch for that? Uh, you see him kind of get a little lost by the question. 
Look, look. I need a job. And if you take me, I'll be a good crewmate. I know he seems nice, guys. I just look at Dr. Ruha. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Brinkley. <laughs> what was your reason for leaving your last posting? And how did that job go? Job was finished. Got my pay. Now I'm here on Crustmore. Mm. Just waiting out the next one. Like the rest of us. And hmm. the fate of the crew of this last mission? Well, I'm here. They're over there. And he points to this... This, uh... These guys taking out, like, what look like people that have been, like, restrained in some kind of horizontal positioning, and they're just they're just being carted in, like, uh, some kind of... Some kind of captives, you can tell, but it's not clear what they're doing. But it's clear that he walked from that ship to this ship. So you're a bounty hunter. I ain't hunting no bounties. I'm just a crewmate. Um, no, no, it's a good point. But have you, um, how do you feel about bounties? Should they come up? If you get against... a good paycheck. Yeah. All so. right, all right, all right. Thank you. No, we'll be uh uh. We'll be in touch if we need your services, all right? Sure. Can I leave this with you? And he gives you a resume. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. He walks up. I mean, it says something to his character that he had a resume on hand. Yeah, no, there, there was a lovely touch. I don't touch. like him. He's grown on me. He has? Yeah, unfortunately. He uh, has a forthcomingness and an honesty that uh, I quite admire. Initially, I thought he was a brutal little man, and I wanted to... Uh, Shoo him away like a flag, but... Yeah, I think it's not going to be a match, and I look at Peter, and I'm like, we don't want anyone taking bounties on board, no, you know? That would all. that would not... That might cause some hiccups. Anyway, yeah, we'll just see on who's next. Uh, just cross out, you know, Jax. So if he... And once Jax is out of eyesight or any, I'll just rip up the resume. Got it. <clears throat> Uh, Tommy, what are you doing right now? Well, I'm <clears throat> heading that way. I'm heading on. that way? Yeah. Ready to get something started, so I'm going to just, uh, you... drop. You might want to get a little closer to your mic. There you go. That I can do. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, just heading that way. Got I uh, <clears throat> wasn't getting much mod work, so might as well see what this is about. As you... Walk towards the area the ad said to go. See a short man passing out resumes. Two guns. His holsters. <laughs> He's going ship to ship. Uh, but you can kind of see these uh, interesting looking folks. There's a girl with blue hair and a tall android looking. Well, you're assuming. You don't want to judge, though. It's hard to. You've gotten it wrong once before and it didn't pay out right. So, you think you found the ship, though? All right, I uh, I would uh, approach and try to walk up to the one that I don't think is an android. Down the ramp to intercept. <laughs> Hello, are you here of the job posting? Uh, yeah, and I'm gonna assume you didn't post it. I did not. The captain yeah. did. That's right. Here. You'd like. You like dogs? I like dogs, yes. Okay. I'm just kind of <laughs> checking him out because I think he's an android. I'm pretty sure he's an android. Anyway. He's an android. Um, what is your name? Oh, I'm Tommy. Uh, Tommy McDowell. Tommy, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Peter. And, hey, Peter. Uh, you're interested in the job posting. Yeah, I just thought I'd check it out. You guys, uh, Wonderful. what do you have? Well, if you're interested, I'm happy to talk to Captain Larson. And I point to the woman with blue hair. All right, that's where I was going before you step in front of me. So, thanks, Pete. I approach her. Hello there. Uh, are you here for the job posting? Yeah. Uh, 
Do you have a dog? Like a real dog? Not like a clone dog, but like a real dog? Yeah. Lord Kingsley. He's on board. You really have a dog? Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to meet him. Oh, well, maybe, you know, if this works out, hopefully that all you, you'll get yeah. to. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so, so, you, you so you love dogs? Uh, yeah, I just haven't right, seen just an gonna... actual dog in forever. Great. What is your name? Uh, I'm Tommy McDowan. Uh, Tommy McDowan. And, uh, so what is it that you do? What what position were you hoping? I mean, uh, <laughs> take care of him, uh, first off. Uh, so if he's acting up. Uh, but anything, you know, okay. drones... AI. Okay. All right, bud. Uh, well, he's a computer geek. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean yeah, it's you could useful. say that. Uh, okay. I have a PhD. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. So, uh, is that AI um, background mainly? Um, computer vision stuff. So. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, how many uh, how many missions like this have you uh, done? Well. What is the mission exactly? Oh, it's just a deep space star charting mission. Oh. You know, for the oh. Astrians, they're all about those star charts. Sure. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I've been working for you know, uh, 76 years now, I guess, out in deep space, you know, on and off. They're really 10 years away, but. You know, oh, all uh, right with Hermitage, so, uh, <clears throat> but, uh, how big's the crew, and is he the, is he an android, right? Uh, yeah, this is our first mate, Peter, and, um, this here is Your our, first mate. well, yes, yes, Peter's <clears throat> the first mate, I'm kept in here, and, um, Dr. Ruha here is, well, actually, what, human what did, resources, there we go, human resources, uh, can I get a look at your credentials? Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I use my uh, small device to show her. So... Do you I have mean, an issue with androids? Um, I've had some issues with them, yeah. Uh, I mean, I work in AI, so you kind of know the ins and outs of things and how it can go wrong. So, you know, but if you, uh, if he's a newer model, we should be fine. Yeah, there, there won't be any issues with Peter. <laughs> I've been working with Miss Lawson here for a very long time, and I've had no issues, as yeah. you say. Cool. Good, I'm I glad. I think we should hire him. <laughs> it was okay. cleared up. What a squirrely little creature. We don't have to worry about him uh, murdering us in the night. Yeah. Yeah, 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 no, it's a good point. Um, all right, Tommy, uh, how would I you like... like... I think we hired him. I just keep saying nerd. How would you like to be, uh, our science officer? Yeah, uh, sorry, um, how big is the crew, even? Is it just you three? Uh, well, is it right now, but we're crewing up, you know, it'll be a full working ship. Um... You're here early, yeah. so uh, I, I'd love to to offer you that that head position as science officer. Um, the only thing is, uh, if you would not do standard credits, and we could work something out, um, that would be best. Absolutely you, unacceptable. Uh, well, wait, wait. You don't want space credits. What do you want? No, I just um, if you could put them through a couple of the channels first. He is an illegitimate businessman. Truly, he cannot be trusted. Well, I mean, but maybe just explain. Is it what's the reason? Uh, what's the reason for that one? He probably owes some money. No, um, I'm just Let me technically. Let technically... on your credits account. No, no. You know what? That's fine. Credits are fine. All right. Well, I mean, well, you now know. I have my worries. Why do you want to be paid under the table? I'm just technically on uh, leave with Hermitage, and, uh, you know, the less that shows up on my account, the better. Oh, well, you know, I'm sure we can figure something out. That's, that's not a big issue for me. 
Alright, yeah, no. Uh, you're hired. Welcome, science officer. Uh, you, you can um, make your mm. way inside the uh, the uh, personal quarters. Yes. Are... Any sure. beef you have with Armitage better not fall back on us. Oh, it's... No, it's not It's not a beef. <clears throat> Do you have an outstanding contract with them? Some obligation you failed to, uh... Oh, no, on? I didn't... I... Hmm. So... There was an issue on the last ship. Um, and, uh... I'm just not continuing work with them. What was um, the... For a period of time. Issue? If you don't mind my asking. Um... You, you've heard of the... For the Hall of Fall Uprising? Oh, brief. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was my last post. Uh, so I just, I mean, it, it shouldn't affect this. Just, you know, it's a smaller crew, smaller ship. Um, oh, uh, yeah, no, it'll much smaller. Don't you worry. Yeah, I and mean, you just, I mean, there's just. The one android, right? So. Yes, I am okay. the only android on board. Yes. Cool. All right. Well, um, yeah. No, you can make your way inside, and uh, the the living quarters are, should be just ahead of you when you enter the ship. Um. All right. Um. Make yourself at home. The the uh, science labs and med bays will be right behind you when you get in as well. If you want to just. Take yeah, yeah. Look. Uh, is is your dog in there? Yeah, I don't know where Lord Kingsley is right now, but he's he's in there somewhere. Yeah, don't Just let him out. Let out. Yeah, don't don't Do you mind let him. <laughs> find him, poke around. Him. Fine. Yeah, I mean you're just gonna play with the dog, right? Yeah, yeah. I just I hadn't seen one in forever, and I just. Oh yeah, no, yeah. Go for it. All right. He's very nice. He's very nice. I, I like Tommy. Um. I think he was talking about the dog. Oh. What made him wrong? <laughs> no, I was talking about the dog. I have my reservations uh, about Tommy. Oh. Mm, I oh, can see why. Are. In your case, in particular. <laughs> um. If once Tommy's taken a few steps away, I'm just gonna use my um. Uh. I'm gonna talk into my comms device. Just her. warden. Can you just remind me what's the hell fell uprising? <laughs> warden not available. Update commencing. Oh, God damn it! This freaking update. It's always at the worst times. All right. Um. You know, I mean, I vaguely remember something about the uprising. I just you but, know. But uh, more so based off of some of. Uh, Mr. McDowell's reservations. I would hazard to guess uh, it probably has something to do with some type of haywire AI. Yeah. That would be my guess as well. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a problem for us. I mean, you know. Would hope not. He's got. Well, I really truly hope Peter doesn't go on a murderous rampage. I have no reason to anticipate that this will happen. Right, so exactly. Judge right out of the gate. You know what, Peter? Between you and me, I find you less uh, upsetting than the two other people we have interviewed. <laughs> Something, I guess. Yeah, no, I think it'll be fine. character, especially. Oh. Very spicy. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, and he was so cool for, I mean, he had 76 years of experience. Oh, uh, most of those were in hypersleep. Well, I mean, I don't really know. only has 10 years. It took me ten years just to get to college. <sighs> right. All right. All right. All right. Well, I mean, it's good. We've got we've got our our human resources. We've got our science officer. We just. Uh, I mean, I I can pilot, and so so you know, so can Peter. We're we're pretty covered for the bridge. Um. Uh, we'll need some general crew to fill out as well, and then just to cover our our. Uh, engines really yes any possible mechanical issues or things of that nature yeah excuse me <laughs> excuse me hey i'm looking yeah. for the uh the density 
I'm sorry, Destiny. I'm looking for a ship called the Destiny. Hi. Uh, uh, yes, this would be the Destiny. Yeah. Hi, oh, right, how's it going? Uh, Buck for Jay Sanchez. Uh, I'm a worker in the Teamsters Union, uh, 30 years strong. Uh, I got a resume right here. I can provide all my documentation. Oh, amazing. Uh, I work for union rates. I do engineering work, uh, maintenance as such. Uh, I look over things. As long as you're willing to pay, <laughs> I'll do the work. Is this it, huh? Wow. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Oh. What a professional! He's clearly done this before. He's well, union. Yeah, and I forgot to do this with the other candidates. Welcome to your destiny. Oh god, oh, please never do that again. Oh, I, that's the real destiny. good. You should put that in the in the in the literature. Wow. Thank is this you. font? Is this space time new robo? That is fantastic. Thank you. Did you do this? This is great. If this is the kind of work that's coming out of the Dens Destiny, then uh, we are in for a good time. Wow. Uh, Buck, welcome on board. I I am willing... Hey. I think we found our chief engineer. That sounds pretty good to me. I don't think that one's on my list. Uh, what was your name, uh, oh, Doc? Of course. Oh, oh my this goodness. Is, this is Captain Larson. This is Dr. Ruha, and I am Peter. Uh -huh. Hello, Peter. How's it going? Nice to meet you. Nice, and, nice hair. And we've hired. Thank we've you. got uh, Tommy McDowan, uh, who right. is uh, going to be our science officer on board. Great. Years of experience should be great. And uh, yeah, the rest of the crew will uh, fill out shortly, I'm sure. Fantastic. But we've got most of our our leads here now. Hmm. It, it was Take easy. Take my duffel and find my find my Wait, quarters. Wait, you you like dogs, right? I love. Are you kidding me? All right. I love dogs. All right. But does Did it have you? a bandana? A bandana. Yeah, like a bandana, like a bandana dog. Don't worry, we'll figure it out. No, he's... <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, we could get him a bandana. Man. I would be cute. He's got a little space suit though. It's really cute. It's great. Um, just don't say. Oh, this goes for every Dr. Rua, I didn't tell you yet either, and I'll have to mention it, Tommy, but I, I, I feel like he's sensitive enough. Just don't mention anything about his weight to Lord Kingsley. He's very, um, just very self-conscious about his weight. He is a sensitive boy. Yes, he's a bit of a chubster. A chonker, if you will. I have not been around many dogs. I'm more of a uh, cat person. Hmm. All right. They're quiet. They clean. They're not needy. Lord they Kingsley's go in a box. not needy either. I mean, his space suit takes care of everything. You know. I am sure there are other people on the ship who will give him the attention he requires. And you that gotta, is my hope as well. I mean, you got to see him in zero G. It's just the cutest thing ever. I'm sure it is. All right, uh, keep an eye out if there's anyone else. Um, yes. actually, wouldn't no one's been, uh, you know, looking our way in any sort of suspicious manner, have they? You notice a higher presence of the black bands. They just kind of roam in the docks. They seem to be searching for something. It, it, it can't tell if it's that ship that uh, Jax got off of, mm. but uh, they're definitely making their presence known today. And as you're... Any... No, continue, please. As you're waiting, you see another person walk up. Are y'all the... Did you put out the... the call for a crew? We did, yes. Hi. I'm Lynn. Uh, Lynn Hello. Schultz. I'm, I'm sorry. This lanky person, long hair, almost, almost platinum blonde, but uh, just kind of like got a bag, some like a rucksack. I'm just uh, looking for the next uh, flight out of here, but. Uh, I specialize in cryo repair. Cryo repair. Oh, all right. Well, what did you? 
say your name was? Lynn. Lynn, Lynn Schultz. All right. Lynn Schultz. Yes. Uh, do you have any um, uh, a, a resume or anything to yeah. show your work? Uh, um, Warden, upload resume to nearby proximity contact. And he does like a little bump and uh, uploads to your, your comm. Uh, I'll show it to Dr. Ruha as well. And... I mean, oh, we we could use, you know, we could feel that we could use some general electricians on board. Okay. Cryo repair is... Uh, references look uh, on the up and up? Um, and I like dogs. Oh, I mean, okay. <laughs> Seems a bit of a no-brainer now. Right? You're hired, Lynn. You're hired. Thanks, this is great. Yeah, I'm quarters glad inside. to be part of the crew. Uh, you'll meet Tommy and uh, I don't know if Buck headed in or not, but yeah. they'll be uh, settling in. Uh, you can claim your quarters in there. Great. Welcome aboard. Thanks. You see, uh, Lynn, let's let's the hair drop and uh, just kind of just goes in. Uh, Lynn, are you hiding from someone? No, I just feel more comfortable um, keeping to myself. I just repair the cryopods. Yeah, very well. It's just shy. I'm just shy. Mm, people who have that uh, much uh, commitment to keeping such a low profile, oftentimes they are hiding maybe from one of the many flat band people <laughs> that are here or roaming the docks. I'm sure that no one, no one, any of these fine individuals that we've hired would be doing such a thing. <laughs> How can you be sure? Um, I, I can see right through people. You I, can know, I can see into their souls. And I trust <laughs> into their brain, as it were. And I trust yeah. her judgment. If yeah. she thinks he is, if Lynn is okay, then Lynn is okay. Yeah. And look, Peter's well, an I AI. Hope so, but I don't think you should take things at uh, surface value. I think Peter would be able to, you know, suss out if someone was being, you know, but that is not Peter's uh, specialty. Well, no, but he does notice things, you know, a little more than a human eye. He seems abnormally shy, but didn't seem to give off any um, noticeable red flags. Look, yeah, shyness, I'm okay with. You know, but we accept you, all here. I mean, Dr. Ruha, you are going to be in charge of those sort of things. Is there something that you find to be particularly concerning? Do you know there was once a man, I believe he originated from North Carolina in the USA. For years, all everyone could say about him, his neighbors, his fellow churchgoers, they would all tell everyone that he was so nice, willing to bring you a cup of sugar in need, all of these things. One day, his house happened to catch on fire. And when the construction workers came to assess the damage that had been done to the foundation, they found 32 severed heads in his basement freezing unit. Uh... And with that, I put my pen behind my ear and walk up into the ship. <laughs> that was graphic. Peter, what? I mean, you know what? I heard that Earth was fucked up, but I didn't know it was that bad. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was bad. Um, I believe what Dr. Ruha is saying is that we cannot judge someone by first appearances and that maybe we should keep an eye on Lynn in case she is hiding or they are hiding something. Oh, oh. Yeah, 
well, of course, you know, hmm, we're all hiding something, aren't we? I mean, uh, we, besides the two of us, we do not know any of these people. It's so true. It is possible that one of them has um, ulterior motives or uh, unfortunate character flaws that could uh, impede uh, our well-being or the job. Well, so it would be who was to keep a close eye on them. Uh, right, I think it's always good to keep a close eye, but, um, you know, it seems like a good group so far, right? I mean, at first glance? At first glance. Fine. I mean, we would have to do... Th I mean, anyone is going to be a risk. It's part of crewing up, you know? You are correct. Don't know people at the beginning, and, um... Yeah, I don't know, it's just part of it. Um... As you all go in into the ship... It's just like littered with like fast food containers and uh, string lights down the hallways. There's spray paint covering old text in the hallways, um, but all there are there are string lights of various colors in every hallway. It's very fun. Um, posters on the walls, uh, lots of little you know hydroponic sort of succulents and things. Some of them are real, some of them aren't. And, um, yeah, it's a bit of a mess. Just a bit. Mainly with the trash. But it's cozy. Um, it might, it seems like a little off. Everything is, um, very high tech. And what one would say is, like, expensive, top of the line. But it still looks like trash inside. <clears throat> yeah. You would probably hear me exclaim then as I enter. You would probably hear me say something like, Hi, Ram. <laughs> mm -hmm. I suppose we should go check, make sure they're settling in. That's this is it. filthy. <laughs> we'll follow in, not too far behind. Got it. Great. Right. Could, could I suss out how old Kiko was? Uh, you, I think you'd guess, like, early 20s. Okay. All right. Your best right. guess. You know, as long as no, you know, she hasn't had any work done or cry asleep and, you know, that's what you gotcha. would guess she appears as. I, I feel like maybe I, I wondered that and I stepped in the ship and saw the state of the ship and it's sort of, all right. Continue. <laughs> I believe, um, I need to apologize. I forgot to clean up the ship before they got here. I was busy doing other things and I forgot. I, I ran out of time. A oh, shit is all Lucky, all... you live like this? Um, look, it, it was a quick, um, it was a quick trip, you know, it's just, I, sometimes I stress eat, okay? I, I haven't. Some uh, of these containers are weeks old. Don't lie to me. Look at this one. Something's growing inside of it. I will, I will take care of the containers as soon as possible. I apologize. That is Thank my you, fault. Peter. Kiko, don't take this personally. But people aren't going to take you seriously if you don't take your ship seriously. This is your business. You are an enterprising woman now. As you say that, you just hear this. Oh, and, Lord. and there's just this, <laughs> this chubby little, some kind of bulldoggy <laughs> mix just right at your feet. <laughs> Lord Kingsley! Oh, look, he Hello, likes Lord. you. I come running from another room. Where'd you go? Where did you go? You see oh, who's like, a good boy? <laughs> oh my god, he's so chubby. <laughs> I've been down a bit of Hello, Lord Kingsley. This is Dr. Ruha. I don't, I believe Hello, you have Lord met. Kingsley is living in garbage that is stacked up as high as he is. I do this not believe you minds. It's like mazes mm. for him. He's fine. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Peter kneels down in front of Lord Kingsley and goes, uh, I believe you've met uh, Mr. McDowan. Uh, there will also be a Mr. Bu uh, Buck Sanchez on the ship. And he's talking to Lord Kingsley like any other sentient <laughs> being. <laughs> mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Everyone's hit each other. Um, have you guys um, checked out the living quarters? Claimed your space. I, 
Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying, no, I, I have not yet. Okay. You want to give me a tour? Or? Oh, oh, of course. Yeah, let me give you a tour of the ship. All right. <clears throat> um, so to our left right here, uh, we're facing towards the back of the ship when you come in. We came in from the underneath the ship on a ramp. And now we're facing the back, um, sort of in the center of the ship. And straight ahead of us are the living quarters. To the left, um, you see what, what's written out is, um, you can see it's been spray painted over, but it's not totally sprayed. And uh, you see that it would have been the barracks. And then uh, behind that, uh, I'll, she'll walk around uh, the hall so that you guys can see behind the living quarters is the galley and this is where you guys can you know get your monch on and uh, hang out um, to our left as we're passing um, she she doesn't point it out but you guys all see that there's clearly a rail gun but we, she just walks by it real quick we got cryo chambers right here to our left uh, buck the engine room engineering is back here we actually have two jump drives as well oh as our thrusters for you to take care of while you're here. Um, next to the cargo hold in the back of the ship, uh, on the right we've got, or next to the engineering, we've got a cargo hold. And then as we loop back up on the other side of the living quarters, we've got uh, one of our computers. Again, she just sort of does not stop, uh, but there is a cannon on the other side and just sort of goes on our life support module right here. And then straight ahead as we go to the front of the ship, uh, we've got our med bay to the left and our science lab to the right, and then the bridge uh, at the front with the our two other computers. Yeah. But uh, let me see the surgery. What kind of condition is it in? The, what, the med lab? Mm. Uh, it's like top of the line untouched, like has never been mm -hmm. used. And the same goes with the science lab. They look like they've been untouched. Um, Warden is... Lynn anywhere around? Do I see her in this group of people? Uh, Lynn is following around. Great, I just wanted to make sure they were here. Actually, this is a good point. Is Lynn he or she? Or they? Lynn's they. They, all right. Good to know. Thank you. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, make yourselves at home. I want it to feel homey. I want people to be comfortable here. You see Lynn's just got like a, like a pencil, kind of like Picking up a piece of trash and just putting it into the like the nearest receptacle. Yes, I apologize for the mess. I will get on that as soon as possible. It is my fault for not cleaning it up earlier. I apologize. I am sorry if I shamed you too much. We you were in a shame. bit of a hurry, you know. We did. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah sit okay. down in the science lab chair and test it out. <laughs> you know. You were. Uh... Are you seasoning it? Sorry, what? I was asking if you're seasoning it. Since it's all so new, some of this still has the plastic film on it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, this... no, you know, the ship's a new acquisition, is it so? It happens. And um, we haven't had any injuries or real uh, things to take care of in the science lab, so things have not really been used. Exactly. It's interesting, considering it's a military ship. Hmm? Well, it would have to be with a cannon. This ship has combat capabilities. I'm oh, assuming it's a you know, of we got it second hand, so, um, yes. that, that, well. you know, interesting, you know, I guess they, uh, you know, just get rid of their old you know, sh ships they're not going to be using. This is a require real things along with a purchase that you didn't initially intend. Yeah. That's like a serious railgun. Uh, oh. no, that's a serious railgun. I'm just saying that it's like, a pretty big deal. Yeah, well, well, it's good, you know, we'll be in case anything happens, you know, God forbid, I'm sure we'll be fine, but um, we'll have uh, plenty of protection, I guess, if anyone knows how to use I mean, this is a peaceful group so I mean I don't even think it'll be used you know those things have to be manned you know right I was merely trying to compliment how well you've repurposed some of the uh, initial 
I guess. Oh, yeah. You were so sure. probably meant for other things at one point. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I, I, I worked hard. It's I, not I'm... my job to ask where you got it from. Thank you, Dr. Ruha. Mm. There's been an alert in the docks. What is that alert, Warden? Sorry. There's been an alert at the docks. I thought you wanted to know. What is the alert? Uh, no, <clears throat> no, this is good. Thank you, Warden. It's the uh, alert that we um wanted to be known about. Yes, that alert. Uh, uh, all right, uh, you let's You just get told going. me that you wanted to be known about an alert, and I'm here to know, tell you that now. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Warden. Thank you, Warden. Warden, thank you. Uh, <laughs> all right, everyone, uh, are you settled in? Maybe buckle up. We're just gonna we're gonna um head on off. Uh, hiring for the roster. Oh, yeah, you know, well, there's another starport not too far from now, and she's already walking to the bridge. She's just talking behind her shoulder, unless you're following. Um, so just y'all make sure that you're, you're buckled in because, um, we'll be maybe you know going pretty quickly. Just that's that's it. She, you know, speeds up and, and just sort of gently put my hand on her shoulder, very gently while walking with her, and just say, mm -hmm. It's okay. Just tell me exactly how much trouble you're in. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> we don't have time. <laughs> we don't have time. Uh, uh, let's go. Oh. She sits um, down, Kiko, straps up. Mm -hmm. The alert you'd wanted me to warn you about is here. Would you like me to tell you? Oh, um, okay. I believe you'd want to leave the dock right about now. Okay, let's go. Jump drive. I'm going to do a jump one. <laughs> I hope everyone Jump buckled one. up. <laughs> I, I was I was about to ask Tommy if they'd set up your direct deposit. <laughs> the uh, Peter just clamps a hand to the and wall. You, and and you time to sit down. Yeah, no, jump one to towards the coordinates. I know it's not the full the full length, but in that direction. Right. So I probably fly back a few feet into Peter, let's, raced by him. The jump one's particular. When, when normally no one's awake when you jump with the ship, and uh, <laughs> typically because of the mental trauma it causes when uh, when you're <laughs> awake during the jumping process, most humans aren't capable of handling um, the strange happenings of a a jump one or any jump for that matter. Um, so as everyone quickly sits to brace themselves this Lord is Kingsley. completely <laughs> oh, yes. shocking the rest of y'all because i uh, you know that jumps only happen when you're in cryo sleep um but for some reason this ship is about to make a jump one and we're going to get to that right after this break
And we're back. <laughs> well, since you jumped straight into uh, a jump one uh, hyperspace jump, <laughs> we're going to need to do a sanity save. Oh, shit. Okay. For everyone. Very good at this. <laughs> If you're joining us for the first time, we're using the Mothership uh, rule set for the sci-fi RPG. So this is actually a, a sci-fi horror RPG, and the Mothership book can be found online. A very cool little zine here, and uh, you can I think you can download the PDF for free. But if yeah. you want to take a look at what we're doing, follow it on Mothership Sci-Fi Horror RPG. Well, it's going to be a fail from me, and uh, I, I believe my stress goes up by one, right, with a fail? Yes. All right. That is a fail for me as well. <laughs> Ooh. I'm good. Good, right? We are trying to roll under our sanity. Correct? Under our sanity. Mm -hmm. I know, I got your accent for a second. <laughs> it's all right. That's contagious. That is a failure for Buckford. As what about Dr. Ruha? Yeah, Dr. Ruha. You couldn't hear me. I succeeded. Great. Uh. I was talking this entire time. <laughs> so <laughs> we can't hear you if we're Along with the sanity save, all of y'all experience what you could maybe say is one of the worst feelings you've ever had. The ship jumps, and you realize the ship isn't going anywhere. It's everywhere else is moving around you, and the time has become displaced somehow. As you kind of try and make your your look around in a brief moment of like a panic, you're like, oh. Sorry, I gotta roll for Lynn. Lynn fails. Um, you just see your life flashing before your eyes, and there's just this strange sense of unease. Colors start to brilliantly dance in front of you. Shapes unfurl, almost like an origami structure, blending into the ship itself. As you take a look at your own hands and body, you realize you're no longer alive. You're flying through some other altered experience, this other state of being, and you kind of come to uh, as if you were lightheaded, like you got up too fast and you were you were just took a little shock of oxygen or the uh, no, lack of oxygen to the head, and you come to with this eyes are open, but you're vision is black and it fades back in slowly as the hyper jump stops and immediately the migraines ensue. Oh, shit. You hear from Peter just like a burst of like what sounds like error coding. Just like machine noise comes out of his mouth for a second. He just clamps his hand over his mouth. That did not feel good. Uh... No. Did we just jump? I'll get on. The I'll get on comms real quick. Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry about that. I had to uh, just do a quick jump. Uh, normally, I'd give more warning. Uh, it was a bit of a hurry. So an X I didn't want to run into. I don't know. I hope everyone's good. Yeah, make sure to take care of yourselves. Visit the med bay if you need to. Okay. Who are you running from, and how dangerous are they? Because they cannot believe you just jumped without putting the crew under. I, I know. I mean. You can trust me. Patient doctor confidentiality. I promise I won't tell anyone. Please. Uh, um. Oh, Buck and uh, Tommy, are you guys in your rooms, or where were you guys? I was in Science Bay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Belted in. Yeah, I was in engineering when I was caught on guard. I had okay. Lord Kensington with me. Okay. <laughs> Lord, Lord <laughs> Kensington. 
Kingsley. Kingsley. Okay. I God, mean, sorry, the warp. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um. All right. So it's just uh uh, Doctor oh. Ruha, Peter, and I in the bridge. And Lord mm-hmm. Kingsley. I I removed myself from Peter since I, he had to catch my fall. Right. <laughs> I apologize. If I. No, thank you. I would tough. have hit the back of the ship. Very quickly, Lord Kingsley looked perturbed. That makes two of us. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I mean, look, I'd like to. I'll break this down for you more, perhaps. You know, when I don't have a raging migraine. Um, but uh, short story is my mum. Yeah. I can understand family drama all too well. Yeah, it's a, it's a strained thing. You know, lots of trauma there that I don't mm. want to dig up. And she's looking at Peter and being like... Yes, it was um, a very a very bad woman we want to avoid. Um, Kiko, a word of advice. If you're going to work in space with people, it can already have a lot of stress and uh, negative impacts on your mental health. Uh huh. You have to be able to re- rely on your fellow crew members and bringing them onto your ship without apprising them of any type of danger. It's going to work against you more than you think. If people know what they are signing up for, they are less likely to hold it against you. Yeah. I stumble out of the science bay, put my hand on the wall, and just puke. Oh. <laughs> How is everyone's heads feeling? Oh. Like shit. I think I have something I can probably <laughs> prescribe to everyone. Mm. Just take some of the edge off. Yeah, uh, let, let's convene in the galley, shall we? Yeah. Let's mm. say over comms. Make I'm our way board. to the galley mm. and uh, bring any meds that you think might help then, Dr. Ruha. I'll bring my medical bag. Uh, uh, when I observed the the dog, how does he look to me? The dog looks to be doing better now that you see it. Mm. Oh, yeah. Is he walking normally? Oh yeah, he's walking. Well, he's walking as normal as dog can in space. Mm. Oh Lord Kingsley, I'm so sorry. I'll pick him up and just like, you know, give him some good pets. Yeah. Get him back down. Um, yeah, sorry about that, everyone. Uh, had some uh, unexpected uh, company arrive, and uh, we just had to get out of there, you know, pronto. Uh, make, making a jump like that uh, from the get-go it puts a lot of stress on the engines, and I don't mean to question your uh, position, Captain, but... Uh, you know, as as the new engineering here, uh, maybe next time we could get like a thirty second head start before we, you know, pop on out yes, like that again. Of course, and and as far as far as I'm concerned, we're all equals here. You know, I want this to be um, a crew that that everyone's comfortable on. I don't want you to think that there's going to be any toe stepping or, or what have you. You know. As long as the uh, check's clear, you know what I mean? And real quick, could we just just do a real quick data test just to make sure the credits are good and then no more questions for me? Uh, oh. Just make sure everything's on the up and up. Yeah, of course. Well, I mean, you will get your... We could, I suppose, do a part of it in advance, but it is, you know, at the end of the month after the job is done. Uh, just, you know, st- standard procedure per union guidelines, subsection 3, 4, you know, it's just like a good faith payment, you know, not much just to make sure the goods are there. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, um, no, we can do that. Warden, if you would, um, transfer everyone that's been hired on as the crew, um, send them, uh, 1,000 credits up front. 1,000 credits going out now. Collective, uh, collective bargaining, you guys. Thank you, Captain. Appreciate it. 
But yeah, you know, I'm not like a, a union worker or anything, so like, you know, those guidelines aren't like part of this gig. Well, I just have to uh, make every attempt to make sure uh, wages and work are fair. That's all. We've we've had the oh, communication. Yeah, yeah, the little yeah. Checkbox. We're good. All right. Yeah. Rupa, do you have any of those meds? I do. Uh, they are best taken on a full stomach, so I will. Uh, oh maybe yeah. Prepare something for all of us. Yeah, 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 help yourselves. The, the fridge should be uh, stocked. Let me just check our cargo. Yeah. There should be some food in there, yeah. Yeah. I'll make us all a nice stir fry. It'll be a good team building exercise. Hey, they'd be lovely. Actually, no, yeah, it'd be great. We should all get to know each other a little more hence we uh, settle in. <laughs> Are there any uh, objections to it being a little bit spicy? No, you go for it. No. Uh, uh, Perfect. That's just fine with me. So where did we jump to? That's a good question, you know. I had to give a bit of an estimation just with the rush. Uh, uh, Warden, where are we? You're somewhere about past Sector 8. Right. Right. Wait, uh, we... It, it, are there any any hostilities around us? You know, I forgot to check. I just the migraine, everything coming out of. Uh, are we are we in a stable position right now? We are currently stable. Any any threats around, Warden? No threats. All right. Well, Would sure. you like something else? No, that's it, Warden. I see you guys. We've got top of the line Warden AI system throughout the ship. It's amazing. You can ask him anything. It's uh, incredible. <clears throat> ask him a question. Go for it. It's like when you ask me the question, I can't think of a question. So, Warden, what is the temperature and weather like in New Delhi? New Delhi is currently 120, as normal Earth temperatures have risen in the past 50 years. Lovely. Is where where is everyone from actually i'd love to know i mean or is it originally mars uh, but really i've been like i said deep space for 76 years ish so uh, what what is mars like i mean it's different <laughs> you know um uh, it's only partially colonized, so uh, still a lot of red. But you know, it's the only place I've seen grass grow. So uh, it's in a dome, but I've seen it forever. Yeah. Yeah. What about you guys? You been to Earth, or uh, I am actually from Earth. Uh, <clears throat> born and raised in New El Paso, uh, working on crop hoppers and the such. Uh, money was better in the stars. I've been doing that ever since. Now, uh, I've only heard stories about Earth. Is it? I mean, it's not it... great. It is. Oh, okay. <clears throat> this is much better. It's a lot cleaner. I mean, save for the graffiti, is a lot more dirt, a lot of sand. I don't, I don't like sand. It's gritty and it gets everywhere. Uh, this is better. You know, the food's not quite the same. Uh, but but it's a fair trade. All right. As everyone's talking, Peter just starts going around and picking up trash. What about you, Pico? I well, um, Peter and I are from Eden. Yeah, from mm. Jinchi. Uh, was born and raised, and uh, yeah, no, I love it. I, I've had a great childhood. I'm just like. Yeah, no, it's great. But I, you know, I have to explore. I, I want to see. Uh, I really want to see what it, what's out there. And, you know, I've always wanted to visit Earth. Actually, I, I'm just so curious what it's like. Maybe we'll get there eventually. <laughs> Earth definitely has its charms, but um, I have found that people from Eden seldom find it agreeable. Oh, why? What makes you? say that it's a little rougher around the edges but for those of us who have a fondness or a little bit of a nostalgia it's great it's got a lot of culture i'm sure buckford would agree 
Oh, <clears throat> tons of culture. I just, I kind of grew up uh, in the less, less cleaner parts than you did. So, uh, my culture was a little more rough and tumble. Well, you would be surprised. I've been a little bit of everywhere at this point, but uh, I did my schooling in Mumbai for. Well, uh, in um fancy pants is here. So you like, <laughs> are you like an MD or like a PhD? <clears throat> I hold two different doctorate degrees. Well, <laughs> and, and she one. can cook. And I can yeah, cook. We'll see. We'll see. And I'll start dishing it up for everyone. I've even set aside a nice cut of beef for uh, the the dog, and I cut half a pain pill and place it inside and say, even on his tiny little mind, the rigors of uh, a jump while conscious probably is for the best to give him something. And I dispense one pain pill to each of the cast members. Oh. And as, as I'm walking in and out of the room cleaning up, I just go, we will endeavor not to do that again as I disappear through another door. <laughs> As I, uh, I take the pill. What happens with him on the jump? I mean, we get headaches. With Peter. I saw some stuff, but I've never known a drawing that was up. Yeah. Physiologically, probably very little, but as for mentally, an um, artificial AI would still experience we should ask him yeah I'd you like know just check him out you can just cool. you can just talk to peter you know peter's had look like i said we've worked together for a long time and um uh, i've made i've made some adjustments you know over our time together and um he's he's the best ai i've i've uh i've ever been around and i mean i haven't been around that many um I'm lucky to have known Ad Peter. Adjustments. <clears throat> yeah. What do you? Uh, what do you I mean? I just to make it, you know, just more efficient and to work better with me specifically, you know. Okay. Would you mind if I plugged into him real quick and just ran a couple of tests, to make sure everything's? Well, you know, Peter's a crew member. I mean, I think you'd have to. You sh still need to talk with him. As a high-functioning form of intelligence, I would actually venture to say that Peter may be closer to a synthetic human than a, pardon my cruel vernacular, robot. Absolutely. I mean, you know, a doctor could plug into you to see what's wrong. They'd probably do ah, that yes, too, right? Ah, yes, but consent is required. Exactly. Yes. Uh, consent. Very important. Okay. But, uh, you uh, know, you Peter, should just talk to uh, him. <laughs> Peter leans back in the door with a half-eaten container of food and goes, Miss Lawson, did you want this? I, uh, what is it? Is it the noodles from that one place? Yes. Yeah, just cover I mean, smell it. It doesn't smell too bad. Uh, just cover it up and stick it in the too fridge. Too bad. He walks over and sticks it in the fridge. No, 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 no. <laughs> Are things well, in the fridge stale? Why would you eat yeah. it? We have perfectly good food in the ship. With well, it's from my favorite new? noodle yes. stand. She just made this. This is not. Yeah, but I mean the ingredients. It's not like. No, you, the ingredients are fine. I just. You're gonna eat a week old noodle. You would think there was ready. I just. I don't know how to cook. I don't like eating the little, you know, pre-made, whatever, these little capsules. I like I'm having, food. you know, cooked food. Which means we it tend to, when it was just Peter and I, there was a lot of takeout, you know? I'm not the best chef. Yeah, would walk over to the fridge and start looking for items that are not new and start tossing things out. <sighs> anyway, Lynn, uh, you didn't? Tell us where you're from. Oh yeah, I'm just letting everyone talk. Um, I'm from Eden. Oh, amazing! Wait, where? Wait, oh, uh, where? Where from on Eden? All over the place, really. Just moved here and there. Hi. Okay. Uh, 
You spent a lot of time in Jinchi? Yeah. <clears throat> spent a little bit of time there. Okay. I was there for about two years. Oh, on, on business or? You say. I mainly work in cryopods, so oh. most of the business is off planet. All right. I almost went into cryopod work myself. No joke. Where did you study? I, I was myself taught, really, from the net. But... That's fantastic, man. Oh, that's great. That's, I'd love for you to show me some of that stuff. I've always been interested in that. You can Lord Kingsley, I'm going to move your toys if that's okay with you. And he continues on out the door again. <laughs> you can get into some really cool stuff with cryopods. I like to specialize in some of the uh, uh, synth dreams and the, uh, you know, the things you can experience while you're under. Because, you know, you don't have to just go to sleep forever. You could live out a fantasy or have some kind of adventure. Do whatever you want, really, as long as you got the right programmer. Wow. Well, I know that. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if I'm... I've never been in cryo sleep, so I don't, I don't actually know if it's... Typically, you want to do it before you jump, because it'll avoid all this. Right, it makes, that makes sense. It's much more pleasurable. The wake up's not good, but it never is. It's not natural to sleep that long. Yeah. It's not natural to think you lived an entire life inside of it either. I guess that you said you had 10 years of experience, but mm -hmm. you have been working for 75. Am I correct so in assuming that 65 years were spent in cryosleep? Yeah. Yeah. I cannot imagine the type of impact that would have on your psyche. No, I mean, one of the reasons I took off was, you know, no one left home, so. I mean, for me, I didn't lose a lot, but it was weird seeing, you know, people come back and their kids are older. <clears throat> How long did it feel like it passed when you woke up? I mean, the sim can make it feel like real time so you can live an entire life in there it's, it's weird yeah that sounds <clears throat> uh, yeah. Uh, warden yes how much time is past back on uh 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 crestmore stop or from before our jump we've only jumped an hour Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, I knew that. I, I, I figured it'd be about that much. Relative time. One second. Yeah. Felt a little longer than that. <laughs> um. It was what? not ideal. No, it's not how yeah. we would. Yes. Yeah? What does a job feel like for you? Unpleasant. Hmm. Do you see the colors as well? Um, I, it's difficult to explain. It's more of my, I believe the best way to put it is that my vision malfunction during the job. Mm. I imagine time sort of distorting like that would probably wreak havoc on your uh, systems. Uh, it's not preferable, no. It, I'm recalibrating at the moment. As we are all, I promise you. Um, I apologize for the um, outburst I had while, well, when we came back to real space. It was um, weird. Are you, yes. what? We don't need to use strong words like that. That's just the way his scream sounds, okay? I no, just it hits at a certain register. It just yeah. no. I apologize. It's not good. It's not. It didn't feel good. It is actually I the first time I've made that noise. I don't want to make it again. Yeah. No. How do we'll... you register a feel? How do I register what? A feel. Like I don't want to be insensitive, but how do you how do you feel? Uh, it. I would say it's more of a. Hmm. It's difficult I mean, to explain. How do you feel? Yeah, it is difficult to explain without knowing how you feel 
and then comparing and contrasting the two. It is unpleasant, and it feels wrong. I can't fight that. As you float out amongst the stars, Pico, where would you like to go? Huh. Well, um, let's see. How far are we, um, I mean, I know it's like a month out to the in coordinates <coughs> I'm wanting to go to, but this uh, Estrian job I picked up, do you know where it where it begins? I think we can just kind of, they'll take any sort of direction of star charting, so I just want to see where their um, charts have left off. Uh, how far off we are from uncharted territory, basically. Right, so you're in a place called Sector 8, but there's a, a location on the star maps that's called the Dark Zone. Not that it's dark, it's just that yeah. it hasn't been mapped out. Right. Um, you know, <clears throat> for your mission, you need to head that direction. Yeah. About how far are uh, out are we from the edge, I guess, of where it begins? You've got about three days travel with normal thrusters. Okay. And yeah. The month travel would be in hyperspace. So you would need to go to sleep for about a month. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Let's. Um. We're gonna just go ahead and um. Let's head towards the the edge of the dark zone so we can start doing some charting work, Gordon, and um, just do regular regular thrusters if that's uh, good. I think it'd be. I assume, Buck, you agree we should give it a break. From the yeah, I was kind of hoping to give the uh, whole uh, engine a, a little diagnostic to see where we stood, but yeah, that would right. be preferable. Yeah, let's yeah. keep it on standard, and I'll go give it a look. And we'll yeah. see how we stand. Sounds good. Um, Warden, are there any uh, starports in between there and here that we might be able to, you know, maybe pick up a few other crew members or? There's one more starport available. All right. Which one is it? Starport 476B, unnamed. Oh. Uh, are, are there any details or information about this starport on file? Searching. Yes. It appears to be a standard starport run by the Maritage Corporation. Right. Maritide Corporation. Maritide, all right. All right, well, you know, that'll be a good, you know, we can stop there on the way, um, but I, how many days out is the uh, starport then? You've got about half a day's travel. All right, yeah, all right, yeah. This Why is the last starport. Been there before? You've been there? Hmm. Oh, While I was on tour. Oh, wow. That's right. Uh, we have uh, a celebrity on board with us. I guess I mentioned it. No, I'm Wait. sorry. I don't mean to what, embarrass you. What will we know you for? Well, I suppose you would only really be familiar with my name if you had read one of my books or if you watched TV. Hello? The Guide. Dr. Ruha Ambani from Stars Apart. Oh, I've heard of that. <laughs> She's amazing. You should see it's... the problem she fixes. No offense. Like, why are you here? Well, I grew bored with taking care of uh, celebrity couples. Oh, really? I see. Mm. Are you not planning on doing any more shows, or what? Well, no one can say definitively what the future holds, but uh, for the time being, I think I want to see uh, what else I'm capable of doing. Yeah. Ooh. Very cool. Huh? But if you do need any medical advice, feel free to schedule something with me, and I'd be more than happy to help. Boy, can I just ask, what was your favorite couple that you worked with? Like, what was your favorite, like, uh, problem to fix? I think a lot of Stargaze 
and her husband, Rico, they were a riot. Oh my god, the worst. No idea. I can't believe you guys even watched this. You're missing out. I mean, oh my god. You know, all of the living quarters are equipped with with screens. We could we could pop up. Oh, I really Rico. couldn't. No? It's oh. so nice to have someone who's fond of my work on board, but some people have accused it of being uh, saccharin. You know what? Oh, I would watch some with you. Yeah. You would? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, no, we should have, we should have like, okay, tomorrow night, we're going to do like a crew bonding and uh, we can all watch uh, an episode of Stars Apart. Yeah. Let's see what you got, Doc. Happily. I yeah. mean, right. I think it's a pretty well-received show. I don't know. I can't really tell if it's good or not. When you're on camera yourself, you always think you've done a terrible job. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I mean, 12 seasons, some people must like it. Oh my god. It's amazing. That's all I can say. Yeah, I'm here to tell you, it's amazing. Well, it's awesome like your show very much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Peter knows. <laughs> uh, all right. Lord Kingsley, how's he doing? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna give him a once over. Make sure he's all right. Give him a treat from my uh, pocket. Always have some dog treats on hand. And uh, he gobbles it up. Oh my god! I'm sorry. I didn't even. Where are his goggles? I didn't put his goggles back on. Poor thing. What? We went through I space. Think they, didn't... they fell off in the jump back in engineering. I was. I was heading back that way anyway to do the maintenance check. All right, so great. I'll, I'll pick them up. Great, they would be wonderful. In fact, just take Lord Kingsley. He likes the engines. He likes the you know the hum and I the. I saw him sitting on the warm, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the little hub. Yeah. yeah. Come on, bud. I'm gonna head back to engineering. Check out them engines. Got it. Uh, Warden, can we get a diagnostic on uh, the ship's engines? Why, of course. What would you like to know? Oh, uh, charge capacity. Um how much fuel we've got in the engines, wear and tear, routine maintenance checks, uh, last time the plasma was changed out, you know, uh, once over, kick the tire, see what's up. Your smart screen begins to populate with uh, data that kind of informs you of everything you've asked, and uh, things are looking pretty good. It, it seems this ship is fairly new. Um, really hasn't gone, you'd almost say, anywhere. It's just like, brand new. Yeah. Those are class M boosters. Those are new. Like I didn't even think they were out yet. So I'm, that, I'm fairly impressed. After that jump, we should have about 15 fuel left. 15. Yeah, and your indicators would show that too. And we burned one fuel with that jump. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, um, let me think uh, of any what? other information that you would have back there. Um, uh, this we've got a speed of 30. On this ship. Oh, there's the goggles. There you go. Here you go, bud. <laughs> um, our me max hull is 56. I don't know if engineering... Would... Yeah, you would probably want to know that. The ship's computers have an intellect of 60. And so these stats are all the same like ours. Oh, okay. When we're rolling, it's all under that. Yeah, so the intellect of 60. Um, and you can tell when you look into the computers that there are three computers on board. Um, which is a nice amount for... Or a uh, ship and uh, armor is a 50. Yeah. And then, yeah, it looks like combat capabilities are at a 40. Combat 40, all right. Yeah. And that's, so this, we said this had some, uh, like a military vibe to it, guns. So it's a little maybe yeah. sturdier than chips do, I may have previously do, uh, done. Give me intellect check. All right. As you run through the ship. Boy, I am stumped on this one. I am flummoxed and perplexed. You had no uh, skills to add to that? Uh, I, I rolled fairly poorly on that one. <laughs> you know what? 
I had a, I had those couple drinks I had at the uh, Sweet Seas, and then we did that jump, and I'm tasting the lime and the ginger, and it's just real hard time focusing. <laughs> you're you're fairly sure the ship's new. The crew seems, you know, nice for the most part. <clears throat> you got the stats you needed. Yeah, I'll report back to uh, the captain. Uh, engine looks great. Uh, good job taking care of the ship. Pristine condition. Nice. Amazing. Aside from the Peter uh, still walking around spray board. paint. Except yeah, for... I'm just I'm cleaning and putting the shit back together. Anything that fell over during the jump, I'm writing it. I'd like to observe him from afar. <laughs> Got it. Weird. Uh, as far as you can tell, there's no. I'm not doing anything odd. Anytime I cross paths with Kingsley, I speak to him. Like he's a person. Like I, I was you said you were doing anything odd. <laughs> um, but other than that, it's not just tidying up, as though I were um, a maid or butler. Oh, shit! God, we were in such a rush. I forgot. I'm going to get into my pack and pull out my Polaroid camera. Hmm. I'd wanted to take a photo of us before we left port, you know, the crew, the beginning of the session. Um, man, you know, I can't believe I yes. forgot this. All right, um, uh, all right, I just snap a picture of him. Hold on, wait. <clears throat> Is there a puke? Well, I, well, I'm snapping a picture of Peter. I'm doing individuals. Oh. It's a, it's a Solaroid for branding purposes. Did you know it's Solaroid? Yeah, that's right. Solaroid. Thank you. And then I, I sit that down on the on the in the galley, and then I I go around trying to find where everyone is at right now, and I take a quick picture whether or not they're ready. In fact, I love Candid, so like if if Buck's working on the engine, I just go like sneak it in. Oh, look at that! Always ready. All right, pocket. Um, snap one. Lord Kingsley, of course, always cute. Then, uh, where's Dr. Ruha? Still on I the... have cleaned my quarters. Oh, okay. I was promised the nicest ones. Yes, no, yeah, you can you can uh, take your pick. There are some... There is one that is larger, and uh, I was in there before, but I, I don't care where I stay. Just you start. notice I've moved some of my things in, but I haven't removed yours because I, I want to be respectful. Oh, this is very nice. I'll just, um... Yeah, I, oh. I will take care of this. I will move us to another cabin. Thank you, Peter. Very nice. In fact, just put us in the us in the beds. We'll be fine. Okay. All right. If you um, wish. And uh, I just snap a picture, Doctor Ruha. You notice now there's the plant has taken a prominent prominent uh, position on the desk, and I am playing on a small holographic item. Wait, what so is... I'm engrossed in that when you take a photo. Oh, I see. Oh, just playing. So is it a is it a video game? Oh, no, oh. not exactly. What is it? It's a it's a hachi witchy. <laughs> oh, are those the things? A... No, go on. <laughs> I just show it to you, but I'm a bit embarrassed. It's it's childish, but you know, no. it sometimes helps with anxiety. You seem no. like a small hedgehog. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Oh. Yes, it is one of those, um, oh, I love you take these. care of a um, it... synthetic animal. Yes, I had one of these when I was younger. Remember, Peter? Um, yes, I do. You would not put it down. Yeah. Um, oh, you don't have to be ashamed of it. Oh my gosh. It's a bit, it's a bit embarrassing. But, Not at uh, all. It makes me feel like I have some helps me mark the passage of time. Space travel can be a bit uh, disorienting. And yeah, absolutely. No, it's wonderful to take care. To do. It's good to take care of something. I mean, that's why I have Lord Kingsley. He's just a good friend. He also has wonderful opinions. You know, he never talks down to me. I'm gonna go no, find. Uh, <laughs> go find um, Tommy. Oh yeah, where is Tommy? Is Tommy just like skulking in the hallways? Where? Yeah, I'm uh, always near Peter right now. Okay. Just kind of le leaning up against stuff. Just so observing. Just snap. Wow. You look so moody. 
Tommy, what's uh, what's on your mind? Uh, AIs that aren't uh, aren't up the snuff. Is this going to be an issue, Thomas? No. No. Are you trying to imply that Peter's not up to snuff? I'm sorry. No, Wait. I just I'm just observing. I'm just observing. All right, hold on. How many AI do you know? Oh. I'm going to go grab uh, a couple eggs from the fridge and I'm going to be like, Peter, do that thing where you like juggle them and catch it on your foot, oh, right. you know? Yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah. if you would like. And Peter starts juggling. How many eggs did you give me? <laughs> I just grabbed two, but you know, I suppose it's not <laughs> an juggling, Awkwardly juggling two because juggling two is a pain in the ass. And um, starts juggling and then throws one up in the air and tries to catch it on his foot. Tries? <laughs> well, he does his best. I don't know if it breaks or not. It's an egg. Well, let's do a, let's do a speed check. Copy that. We'll use this as a way to... We'll call it an agility. <laughs> I mean... Oh, I definitely succeed in that. I rolled oh. a four. Impossibly graceful. He catches an egg on his toe. Whoa. And then I flip it back up into my hand. Is that what you wanted? Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. There's nothing, there's nothing subpar or, or temper or whatever you're thinking with Peter. Yeah, their speed is what concerns me. Would it put you at ease if I gave Peter a very small psychological assessment? Just a very friendly one-on-one -on -one chat. Love it. If that would make you, you feel better than I have amenable? Yes. If... I mean, you did it for all of us, right? As we came in, you analyzed all of mm -hmm. us, so. That is very it's only fair. fair. Yes, I will sit for an evaluation. Are we doing this right now? Whenever yeah. you wish. Or should we I not can... be here? Is this a private affair? Uh, for Peter's privacy, it may be better if you're not present. All right. All right, Peter, you, you'll be okay, yeah? Yes, I will be fine. I don't have anything to hide, so if you want no. to observe, as I observed all of yours, um, that is fine. No, it's, it's okay. I'll just, no, I'll just, I'll just give his hand a little squeeze and then I, I'll back away. Um, all right, well, and, and I sort of encourage Tommy too as well. Yeah, Doctor knows fine. what she's doing. She's, uh... <clears throat> She's professional. Oh my god! I can't wait till you watch Stars Apart. Where are y'all going? Looking while she does to... this. While she does. Uh, while they're doing this evaluation, um, I, I'll just escort Tommy back to the science lab so that I can uh, eventually ask him. And I'll uh, I'll jump on one it. of the computers. It's there. Got it. But I don't want to interrupt psychological evaluation. <laughs> Uh, would you prefer to do this here in my quarters, or would you feel more comfortable doing it in the med bay? I am happy to do it wherever you are most comfortable to do it. We should do it here, then. Yes? All right. Yes. So, Peter. Yes? Is it within your programming to uh, harm another person? Absolutely not. Hmm. And have you ever experienced very elevated emotions of any kind? Specifically of uh, anger or uh, violence? Helplessness? No. no, my um, life has been pretty uneventful until very recently. And what is the nature of your relationship with people? Ah, uh, I am, the best way to put it, I am her tutor. I um, have been with her since she was young, and I taught her her basic schooling and things of that nature. And tell me, Peter, was education always your primary function? Yes. That is why I was um, purchased for Kiko, Mrs. Barton. And... 
were the Larsons your very first uh, sort of owners? To my knowledge, yes. Are you aware of the nature of the relationship between Kiko and her parents? Yes. Did you often mediate between them? Um, I was often given instructions by her parents and then carried out those instructions to the best of my abilities to those which you mean. And was this a uh, nurturing environment for you? Um, I... I don't... Uh, I don't know what you mean. Um, I do not... It is not common for an android like myself to receive nurturing. Mm. Let me uh, phrase it a different way. Were you often put in conflicting situations where you had to choose between... Ah, I think I see what you mean. Um, it... I tried my best to um, do what I was tasked in the kindest way possible. That is an interesting statement. What do you mean by that? Do you mind uh, expanding on that point? The... Miss Larson's parents were um, very direct and not... Um, had no time for to use their parlance childish things. I just tried to um, complete the assignment given to me while still encouraging Miss Larson to be a child. While she was growing up. I imagine this must have been very difficult for you. At times, yes, but she um, turned out well, if I do say so myself. Uh, as an educational uh, android, is childcare a part of your functionality? Not um, explicitly, other than to the degree that it coincides with teaching. But you knew something was wrong, and you took it upon yourself to intervene in some way, or to the extent that you were allowed to. Yes, um, it that was... That is very commendable. Um, I appreciate that. It was... just seemed like the correct thing to do at the time. You experienced empathy for the lack of warmth in a child's upbringing, and you filled that lack with whatever kindness of your own you could generate. Would you that agree? Seems, seems agreeable, yes, that is an accurate description. Well, I'm going to be completely frank with you now, Peter. Yes? I'm not qualified to give a psychological assessment for an android. It's quite impossible. I... But this chat together was rather nice. But if you would do me just the, the kindness of, of helping me uh, sort of dispel Thomas's fears, I think that would benefit us both. I believe it would. I was concerned that there was a type of um, psychology that I was not aware of that worked on androids, but now I see that I did not need to be worried. Um... It seems that your uh, programming... It's very advanced, though. Based off of this surface level assessment, I would say you experience emotion. Even if it is, it is to a lesser degree, the empathy it, and the desire to become involved is present. I believe it is more to do with... Hmm. I have... My base uh, programming showed me what um, a mm, correct or ideal environment for a child was, and the environment that Miss Larson was in 
was not matching to that ideal. So I tried to course correct towards a more ideal situation. I suppose the question is whether you did this because it bothered you not to, or if you did this because your programming dictated it. From my perspective, I did it because it seemed to be the best course of action to create someone who is happy. That is an interesting idea. That you believe you know how to make someone happy, or at least to facilitate such an interaction. It would seem that from uh, available research, that if someone has a happy childhood, they are a happier person. I could be wrong, I don't, didn't have one, so. Is this also why you speak to Lord the dog? As though he is a person? Is it to make uh, him feel happier? Miss Larson loves uh, Lord Kingsley and feels very much they are equals, so I treat Lord Kingsley like I would treat Miss Larson. Although you are aware, he does not understand what you are saying. I am aware. Although sometimes he looks at me like he does, and that's concerning. <laughs> sometimes animals can have a knack to do this. I have observed it myself. I think that is why people feel comfortable talking to them. I... It would seem so, although it is not the same for me. Mm. You're talking to him is not for my... There appears to be a ship in our trajectory. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, right. Peter, I should yes. go to the bridge. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, um, all right, can you show it on the... Uh, let's see, I'm just going to... Because I'm in the uh, science bay with with Tommy and he's already on a computer. Can you just pull it up on the Science Bay computer, please? Absolutely. You see uh, what appears to be a gently corkscrewing, slowly orbiting ship in your path. There's debris just about the outsides of it. Uh, uh, Warden, is this a, a functioning ship? It doesn't appear so. Huh. Uh. All right. Um. Can I get the the Let's get the uh, team to the bridge so we can assess what to do uh, next here. Let's move to the to the bridge. Yeah. Or do, are you more comfortable staying here? I mean, there's a position that there's space for each of you in the bridge. No, I'm good. <laughs> Uh, I believe uh, standard protocols, if there is debris in the immediate area, we would raise some sort of shields to prevent damage to the ship. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> Good point. All right. Um, yes. Uh, everyone meet me in the bridge. I'm going to head straight to the bridge. Uh, Warden, uh, can we put shields up just in case some of that debris reaches us? Absolutely. Shields are going on now. All right. Let me just uh -huh. check our ship states all right um huh wouldn't are you able can we get close enough to get a, a scan uh would you know this tommy to get a scan on this uh ship and sort of to determine if there's any life signs or something uh i will activate comms and uh miss lawson i can pilot sit in the pilot's chair and operate things while you uh Concentrate on other things, oh, if that would be preferable. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Right. So I go, I head to the bridge and I start working with Warden to facilitate things. That Excellent. The Sarsen wants. Um. Yeah. All right. I assume. I assume it's all. Uh, we've got the display up at the at the head head of the ship so that we can see what we're looking at here. Yes. Um. Yeah. Tommy, what do you think? Yeah. 
You could try hailing him on the radio first. Of course. But what if it's hostile? I mean, wouldn't it be worth checking life first? I think if they were hostile, they would have fired by now. Yeah, I they also know we're here. I also believe if they were hostile, they may be not drifting freely in space and more uh, stable. It's, these are all Unless great. This is, this is why I've made the best hiring decisions. This is all getting confirmed right now. All right. Um, Warden, let's open uh, hailing frequencies then and I'll... Uh, uh, towards their ship, if we can get one and um, say... Uh, <clears throat> this is uh, Captain Kiko Larsen checking in. I see we have your ship um, seems to be drifting ahead of us, some debris. We're just checking in to see that everything's all right. And if any assistance is needed, uh, destiny out. There appears to be no reply. Oh. You know, Kiko, that, would have, that was very good, but usually when you say you're captain, you follow that with, directly with uh, the ship that you're captaining. Oh, people need to know what your captain is of rather I'll, than I'll make, a, out. I'll make a note. Uh, ship name. Yeah, after. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Um. Okay, but there's no response, huh? I mean, should we uh, scan that ship for uh, signs of life support? That is probably uh, a correct move. Yeah, I think we do that. I mean, if it's a scrapper, though, we could we could get some parts off of her, you know. If if it is just out there. You are speaking my language, Cap. All right, yeah, let's do a scan check for life signs then. Uh, do we need to go in closer? What's our what's our range here? How how fast is it moving, Warden? Uh, are we in any danger as far as the trajectory here? The ship appears to be in a small, gentle corkscrew. Not moving any particular direction. All right. Oh. Yeah, let's Warden. get that. Oh. Do we have drones? We do have one drone available. I mean, we could send the drone in. It's easiest. Look at that. I don't even know we had drones, Peter. That's great. Hmm. What? Huh? You getting that skin done? Yeah, uh, um, I'm just going to head to the computer and we'll do that there. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. Just, just send it forward to the bridge when you have it then. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> All right, I'd like to uh, advance the drone towards the ship. Um, see if there's any visible signs on any of the uh, exterior windows. As you advance the drone, um, you see that the ship appears to be dead. No sign of power, no sign of life. Scans come back negative for life forms. It seems to be just stuck out here. You're not quite to the space station yet, but um, this little hiccup is right about halfway between your destination and where you need to go. So, Captain, it doesn't look like there's any signs of life. I don't know if we want to uh, put out a distress. Um, you know, let somebody know if you want to try to go on board salvage oh. what we can or I mean I think our next step unless I'm missing something you know there's no uh, life signs time is, is there a way you can retrieve some sort of a hard drive or black box from the craft so we can see what happened to it it could be the same thing could affect our likelihood of reaching, reaching our next destination yeah the drone can hook up and see if there's still pressure inside if there is um uh, it's going to take a Just bit. Just getting get... the last five minutes of footage would be invaluable. Yeah, I'll get the drone inside. Just give me a second here. I'd like to uh, try to hook the drone up <clears throat> to the exterior door and see if uh, it can interface with it to unlock. Yeah, can can we get the the drone's uh, 
camera feed on our on our main screen up here in the bridge. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, the feed pops up on the bridge. It's grainy, but it, it clears up slowly as it kind of focuses in. Um, you see the little arms attach, and it begins to like try and open up one of the uh, portholes. Uh, how would you like to do this? Would you need it to cut in, or do you want to try and to get it uh, going through like a hole? Um, if it can't, if it can't interact with any sort of manual um, lock, then yeah, we're gonna have to put a tiny hole in it first to see if there's pressure, and uh, and relieve some of that pressure that's inside, and then we'll try to cut a bigger hole so I don't lose my drone into space. It appears that the hull of the ship is pretty sound still. The debris you see must be superficial. Okay. Yeah, so we'll do about a quarter size hole in the ship right. and that exterior door. The uh, drone opens up a laser cutter from underneath it. It's almost like a spider and it latches on and underneath the main um, capsule this laser cutter opens up and just creates this perfect perfectly symmetrical uh, circle and then this middle arm comes out grasps magnetically to the uh, the portion that's been cut and just <laughs> you're cutting into uh, exterior airlock door you know mm-hmm. I'm assuming you would have wanted to cut through an airlock and not a main yes, part that's of great. the ship yeah and the drone, I'll try to manipulate the drone into the interior where the actual airlock is, and then we'll do the same procedure on that door uh, yeah. to leave. Yeah. So the drone kind of retracts its legs, goes inside, spreads it back out, goes to the inner door, and then another. You're accessing the ship currently. Are there any lights on or anything? Is it just dark? What's it look looking like? So you see far? flickering emergency lights. I'd uh, like to try to locate uh, the bridge of that ship <clears throat> with the drone. The drone attempts to go further in and uh, makes its way through the hallway. You see fairly empty ship, fairly sparse, and uh, you make your way to the bridge, and there's another door like it's closed up there. Um, drone opens it up, accesses the uh, the main the main entryway. <laughs> Power seems to be still activated. The drone makes its way through. Once it's into the bridge, you see it's ransacked. It's just debris everywhere. The chairs are disconnected from their main consoles. And there's a, what appears to be some kind of body floating. Kind of oh. in a gentle um, corkscrew also. Unfortunate. Is there any sort of uh, damage that I can see on the floating body? The head has been removed. Oh my god. Uh, I feel like this is something we should report in, shouldn't we? Mm. But we still require that footage. There could be valuable evidence on it. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. I'll try to uh, locate the equivalent of the black box uh, on the ship. Just try to uh, extract it with the drone. The drone can no longer maneuver in this space as efficiently as you like. You know where the black box is, but the arm didn't articulate in just the way you need it to. What would you like to do? Oh, I will inform the crew um, of my inability to release <laughs> the black box with the drone. Alright. Well, um... Who... <sighs> All right. Um, 
We will have to go in manually. I mean, in, in where? The, I mean, the, their body's been decapitated. What caused that? We have to find out. Whoever did uh, that could be watching us now. Let's take a look around the ship with the drone to see if there's anything else we can see, and uh, yeah, we'll make a call from there. Because, I mean, honestly, we don't need to put ourselves in danger for this. We just call it in and move on. So, we could be we'll... taking a look? Yes, I think that would be appropriate. Yeah, we'll let's 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 have a once-over, at least. Make sure there's no right. one else in there that, that the scan didn't pick up or something. Okay, we'll try to move the drone towards the uh, opposite side of the ship. Right, so yeah. the drone continues its maneuvers. It's almost, like I said, insect spider-like as it begins to kind of grasp along the hallway and pulls itself. It doesn't need the thrusters at this point. Um, it makes its way through the mess hall, and uh, you see that everything is just... Everything just has been tossed. It's been turned, and there's nothing in the mess hall. Um, as it makes its way through the barracks, you notice that, again, everything's been tossed, everything's been turned. There's no sheets, no cloth uh, in the barracks anymore. And continues down the hallway. And you get towards the, uh, the airlock in the engine room. This is on the opposite side of the ship. And... You can kind of see through the door, there's something like blinking on the inside. The drone makes its way in. And that's where you see um, all the sheets. They're floating and they're all covered and drenched in what you assume to be blood. They're just floating out. Um, and then You see, like, as the sheet gently moves, a face is just staring back at you. And it's just the head. Kind of just floating. There's no blood on it. Uh, yeah, my votes, we just called us in. Um... Uh... Who's reviewing, like, okay, let's see, how, how's this going on? Y'all are all reviewing the footage. Yeah, we're let's, all looking at the screen. Let's do an intellect. Uh, everyone give me, a, like, an intellect check as you analyze the footage coming in. I succeeded. 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 It's a fail. Fail. Kiko, it looks like this is some bloody severed head. But those that succeed, you recognize it quickly. It's not human. That head is an android head. Unfortunately, it looks like whatever android was stationed on this ship met with an unfortunate end. I'm trying to put my hand over Peter's eyes. Don't look right. Please do not put your hand on my face. Oh my... Well, um, We should retrieve this android. We could repair it and ask it what happened. I, this is know, obviously this... the work of some deranged individual. Who knows? They could be out there doing God knows what to whom. I don't think I need to explain to you what is on those sheets. Goodness only knows what may have become of the rest of the crew of this ship. Yeah, no, 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 I think retrieving that android, that seems... Can can your droid um, handle um, that? Mr. Um, McDowell, if I'm saying mm -hmm. that right. Mm -hmm. it's, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe you know more about how I work than I do. Um, if we were just to take the head, could we then interface with it and know what it saw? Yeah. And that way it would prove less of a possible danger if um, the thing you fear uh, about me happened on this ship. It's so considerate, Peter. 
Yeah, why don't we just grab the head alone? I can do that. Captain, good? Yes, yeah, go ahead. Alright, I'm uh, gonna try to get the drone to, to grab the head and, and the extract. I'm assuming the hole has to be made larger. Um, well, the hole's fine. For the, the head's smaller than the drone itself. Um, you retrieve the head and you return the drone back to the ship. Um, is there anything else you'd like to do before you leave the ship with the drone? Uh, wooden or, or through the drone, is there any indication of um, what class of ship this is? Is this a, a trade ship, a military ship? What are we dealing with when we look at this? It appears to be some kind of trade ship. All right. I'm almost afraid to say this, but should we not have the drone sweep the ship until we find the fate or the remains or what have you of the crew, just to be sure that no one is left behind? That is, um... Also, we need to ID these people. I'm sure they will have families that need to know what has become of them. Yeah, just just do a quick sweep and record. We'll record all, all the data. At least we can send it with the report. I know it is rather unpleasant work, McDowan, but perhaps you can shut off the video feed and just have the Android record locally. We can do that. If you're fine with having a droid with a head floating around a spaceship trying to find someone who's alive. Well, just, just, I suppose you're right. That might be. Well, just sit we the just, head down first somewhere. We're like we did in scan the... and there were no life signs, correct? It's That's correct. correct. But it is worth checking. Just do the scan. Just, just have it run through the ship. Pick up the head on the way out. I uh, look for a cubby to put the head in real quick with the drone. <laughs> the drone unceremoniously sticks the head into a, a locker. Hmm. Yeah, it's fine. All right. I'm, I'm fine with having the video feed um, up as I nap. You, um, if it would be all right, I would like to um, also see the feed. It's not going to no, it's, bother it's, me. It's still up. Yeah. I was more right, suggesting for the members of the crew who have a less medical background. Well, it's important for us to know what we are uh, getting into as we go into this deeper, uncharted space, you know? But yeah. by all means, if you don't want to see, then please don't. No, no, let's leave it up. Let's go. See, Lynn's like, yeah, I'm going to go check out the crowd. Uh, of, of course, That's... Lynn, of course. You call me when you need is... crowd pot repair. <laughs> <laughs> You sure you don't want to see this? Because this is like safety training videos. You watch this to make sure what mistakes not to make on the job. Look, I'll look. wait for the report. Yeah, let's not push Lynn where they're not. All right, Lynn. Keep it up. Begin navigation. You uh, you can't find any signs of bodies. But what you do find is interesting. Wads of hair floating mess hall, along with denture fi uh, fillings and fixtures. Trace signs like, of blood coagulated, floating around. Um, and uh, clothes ripped and stripped. Quick, quick question about the teeth. Are there dentures and not partially attached gum lines and teeth. It appears to be artificial venture work. This seems um, less like a, 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 you know, pirates came through and more like I don't know what it seems like, but this doesn't seem like your, your typical sort of robbery, you know? No, it is odd. The copious amounts of human hair lead you to believe that somebody shaved people that were on the board. 
Uh, hey, Tommy, just a just a quick thought. Those those dentures were synthetic. Is there a way you can run a, a check on that hair to see if it's synthetic or organic? I mean, he, yeah, I just put it up close to the lens. Go macro here. As you enhance, <laughs> the uh, hair appears to be regular human hair. Did the um, head of the android have hair? Yes. Okay. It's going to be synthetic hair, right? Mm. All right? My assumption is that, yeah, androids have synthetic hair. Yes. Uh, okay. We don't naturally grow hair. I don't know if it was like an implant situation or what. I've not done a bunch of research. But thank no, you. Uh, there is the possibility there are models that have implanted human hair, but I feel like that would be um, cost prohibitive. What's that? that. Cost prohibitive. Oh, I, I said human gross. Human hair is very expensive on the market. <laughs> well, there are human hair wigs. Well, also we said and organic. He did, not, higher price. he did say organic. He did not say human. Like, oh, I, mean, I mean, our friend here, Lord Lord Kingsley's covered with hair. It's not human hair. Look, you know. It's either so way, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, creepy, whether it's android or human, you know, something, something is great Definitely havoc here. Are. Has it gone like through to... the whole ship, or is this, uh... Yeah, the drone has completed its search. Yeah, um, you find out that. that the body and the bridge seems to belong to the android. This is strange. Where are the human remains? Is it... Um, we're getting black and white footage from the droid, or mm -hmm. the drone, correct? There is a uh, limited color. It's hard to see, but... Uh, Very you've got, you've got, Yeah, it's pretty desaturated. It is possible um, that the fluid on those sheets is not, uh, strictly speaking, blood. Where, would, they, where would the hair have come, come from? Yeah. Who is manning the ship? Um, it is possible, and this is just uh, a, a hypothesis based on what I am seeing currently, that um, whoever was on the ship or whomever... Uh, for whatever reason, became very upset with their android and maybe what? disposed of it and uh, left the ship. Um, Warden, did this ship have any um, escape pod or the like? No escape pods appeared to be activated. Look, mm. we, we the best answers we're going to get is from the android itself. You're right. Let's just... Um, I yes. think this is all just guesswork. I mean, something terrible's happened. I don't know that... But what I meant was, um, it is possible that fluid is, uh, from the android and not from a person. Or, uh, more accurately, a human. Yeah. Alright, let's bring the, uh, the head back on board. If, if we deem the android to be safe in working condition, we can always retrieve the body. You have another crew member, you know. I think, uh, speaking from personal experience, if the head is still functional, uh, we should, after we get information that we need from it, we should uh, shut it back down and uh, wait to hand it over to anyone authorized to do repairs. Um, I personally would not like some strangers on a new ship to try and put me back together. Oh. Fair enough. I mean, but I think there's a few of us that know how to handle AI, but I, I understand that. Yeah. Just speaking from... No, that makes sense. That, that makes sense. All right. All right. Uh, let's get the let's get the droid back here. The droid yep. returns to the ship. Drone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Dron drone. We said droid. Drone returns to the ship. Uh, <sighs> the do we have some sort of... Uh quarantine zone or cleaning that they needs to go through there's no quarantine zone in the ship no like 
The, uh, there's like, you know, general decontamination that happens like in the airlock, but we don't have like a, you know, a quarantine space it, after that. Um, if it would put you at ease, I could go and interact with the ad. Well, uh, I wanted to plug it in and take a look at it myself, uh, if that's, uh... Yeah, that's um, your choice. I just meant I could grab it from the airlock and bring it to oh, yes. whatever station it would be worked on. Yeah, let's uh, let's take it to the science lab, I suppose. And we'll head to the airlock that the um, drone is heading towards. Right. The drone docks in and uh, releases the head. What happened to you? I pick it up in the most respectful <laughs> way. Um, and uh, is there, did, on the ship anywhere, do we have sort of a sealed, a container that seals itself? Yes. Uh, I will, before I go to the airlock, I'll go and get the container that seals itself, roughly the size of the head. Put the head in the container, seal it, and then bring it to the science lab. Got it. All right. Uh, when it arrives, I'll just uh, I'll hook it up to the computer. And um, before you do that, do you mind me uh, taking a look at the uh, sort of? Uh... What? Yes. Oh. Yeah, no, of course. You take a look at the. I mean, I can, yeah, I can do some. I can do. The, these are some pretty long cables. You, you can take a look while I, I work on the computer. What in, what type of implement was used to, behead, this creature? This creature appears to be, uh, beheaded via, torque. Force motion. A twisting. That would require an inhuman amount of strength, would it not? Like an From android? my understanding of the human body. Um, depending on what model the android was, uh, it is possible for an android to exert that much force. I know. But to itself? I mean theoretically possible, although I don't see why an android would do that to itself. Um, I open its mouth. Are the teeth missing? Teeth are intact. Um, I don't know. Oh, this is possibly a long shot, but could it be that... Um, I, I remember... Um, Miss Larson, do you remember... Um, when you were young and you would go to the dentist and they had those models of the human mouth mm -hmm. is it possible those teeth were something like that and it may just be a completely um, what is escaping me like a uh, completely arbitrary piece of evidence just an extra set I just Did wanted to like check to make sure Yes, more of like a, mm. it happened to be sitting on the desk in the med bay when everything went topsy-turvy. Mm. In the hair as well. I'm not talking, the hair I cannot explain. Um, alright, I, I just want to see if there's, um, I want to get through, I know most uh, AI have, uh, have, um, some firewalls in place and some, some security so that most people can't just plug in and take a look. Um, I'd just like to try and uh, work my way through that to yes. access. Uh, I'll, I'll work with Tommy, who I assume is going to also be helpful. Tommy, <laughs> together, you with Kiko, will roll with advantage um, to get past some firewalls. Do you want to roll, or should I roll? Uh, <clears throat> well, in, in this, advantage is... Adva roll? Advantages. Well, I mean, we could both roll instead, actually. Yeah. Okay. I assume that. it's a move situation if one of us fails. <laughs> Is this going to be um, intellect? Yes. 
Right, and I'm going to add computers and hacking here. <laughs> I massively pass. <laughs> Yeah, I fail. But you know what? Tommy's got this. Move. All right. I just, I just wanted to try. You, um, you make quick work of it, Tommy. You reconnect a few power courses, uh, courses, power cables, and you add on an external processor. You kind of rework through the, the inner fluids of this droid. You know that that stuff's. That's only needed when it's attached to the body to get the motor functions. It's not needed for this brief communication that you want to do. And uh, it activates. How are you doing? How am I doing? Did he say, how am I doing? That's what I heard. Yeah. Um, um... Good. Excellent. Uh, what happened to you? I didn't feel it not to be able to recall. What do you remember last? There was intruders on the ship. Intruders of what nature? They were forcefully entering. Were they humans or android? Neither. Ah, uh, hold on. What do you mean, neither? They were some other kinds of intruder. A new living being. Can you, what did what did they look like? Can you describe them? This is not the negative. My optical sensors were damaged in the tussle. How many other crew members were on board the ship? There were seven of the others. Or some of them humans? Or all android? They were all human. So six humans, one android. Correct. Um, what was your mission before this happened? We were going to rendezvous with a man named Baxter Vader. Did he say Baxter Vader? That sounded like what he said. Uh, boy, Do you know that... Who that is. Do I recognize that name, Warden? We don't believe so. Baxter Vader does not show up in our database. Baxter, what are the Baxter Veda? He was a uh, old contact from uh, back in the day. I knew him uh, off colony. Met at a bar. He kept explaining he'd met them, the others. Uh, what? You you know that name? I mean, it's I know lots of names. I've been around, uh, Captain. But I mean, what are the odds that that this head? There's got to be more than one Baxter Veda, right? It's a big verse. It's possible. Although, with who you're talking about, and it would be very much a coincidence if it were not the same, considering he talked, as you say, about the others. And I, I'm... this android is speaking about something that is not human or android. Have, have any of you heard stories about the others? I mean, I mean just, yeah. Yeah, just, just the stories. I just Baxter None of it could really be described as factual. Just here's like legends. Yeah, That's I mean, big... I, I'd always thought that they hadn't 
I mean, I can't believe that they would have actually met them at any point and not follow through. I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I, I, I don't think contact has ever been made, actually. Well, if taking what this uh, one says as fact, it would seem that contact was made. Extra if Vader. We are in the, we're in the dark zone. I mean, it's we're in uncharted territories, right? Um, away, not not yet, I don't think. We're not in the dark zone yet. We're still in um, Sector 8, I believe. Warden, is that correct? Correct. I mean, we got to find this Bexter Vader. Oh. Is there a way to extract um, any of its visual memory? Um, or at least try? There could be a way. Hook him up to my main sensors. I'll try and download the information. Um, we do not need to find this Baxter Vader. It is not why we're here. This is unfortunate, yes, but I... We should not go running towards, um, things that we do not understand or things that could be hostile. No, it's Agreed? not. It's not there. It's just he's hid, he's hid contact with the others. I would like to know more about that. I was under the impression this was a star charting mission. Agreed. I mean, if we can get the visual information off of this android, then we can, you know, have the proof right there. We don't need to go find this guy. That would um, be preferable, yes. I don't. And what would we do with this information? Well, it just... Disseminate it. If And if we're moving And scare forward... half the galaxy for no reason. Look, if it's we're... the truth. Going into this uncharted space there's a chance that we might have a run-in with this and i would like to be as prepared as possible if that's the case official protocol dictates that if one is to come across the others to ignore them as they have done us it's not enough for me i don't know uh ignoring Greener, you gonna tell that to the six people that died point of order we don't know that dead we, and we no, don't you just know. shave them and disappear. And we don't know that this but is there the. Are no remains. This might not be the others that we're talking about. This might be some other creature. We don't know. This is on the edge of uncharted space. We can't just. Let's we can't just jump to conclusions. Let's let us see if there is any way for um, Mr. McDowan to get this information that we need. Yes. Well, we could at least have some extra information. I would at least want to see if anyone at the at the next stop at 476 B sure. has at least heard of this guy. If, if there's at least some words to be exchanged. Agreed. If we're going but... to look into it, we should do so very discreetly. For all we know, asking questions is what got this Baxter killed. It could be that what? maybe do we put a mark on him somehow. And if okay. we go into the next port, asking people willy-nilly about his name we may very well be the next target well, has he been remember killed? the story i told you about the the man with the the, the refrigerator yes, unit yes, and the yes, yes, yes. heads yeah i remember what I, it was um an analogy but um I, we don't know that well, if he's dead he's dead but we don't know that he is so. we do and, not we have no evidence that anyone is dead all we have is evidence that someone or some people were shaved and that an android has been torn asunder. This is technically all the information that we have. Classic space shaving. I, are you serious? I, I'm just saying, I, I'm not disagreeing that it is possible that something terrible happened. I'm just saying that the actual evidence that we have points towards nothing except for a missing persons. All right. And Let's try to get the data. Seems strange, but I mean, even on Earth, it is pretty common to shave the heads of inmates. It could be they were taken captive. In which case, we should definitely look into it. Yeah. But I still maintain we should do so discreetly. Yes. These people were meant to rendezvous with this individual, and now they have gone missing. I agree. We cannot risk our position like this. I will. We'll do it discreetly. We'll get the data. We're going to head 
to the space station, and then I have a few contacts on the dark web I can hit up. If they know something, they'll be discreet. Sounds good. Let's take this first step. Alright. So what are we we're downloading the data? Temp Is that what's from the Android? Tempting to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good boy. Begin to download information from the Android. Alright. As the download begins, we uh, will end this episode. Till next time. <laughs> and uh, thank you for joining us for Eclipse Episode 1. We hope you've enjoyed it. We did making it, so. Thank you again, and uh, join us next week for Eclipse Episode 2. The key. Oh, the key? What? Okay, uh, bye. <laughs> you didn't tell me it was called the key? <laughs>